right, we're back here at NAM second day, and we've got Jeff Weber here. You are, we've talked before, um, and you are a music producer, and the things that you've done in the past from, gosh, so many people that you've produced, um, your, your catalog must be like this thick, right? That I may know of, possibly, but because I suffer from CRS, there's a lot of stuff that I don't know that I did. I have to call somebody if I really want to know. Name some of the people that you've done uh, work in the class with. I produce people like uh, Luther Vandross, Chick Corea, Stanley Clark, the guys from Toto, uh, David Benoit, uh, McCoy Tyner. St uh, it's the who's who. A lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people. I have a lot of fun. Yeah. And I don't try to change my artists. I try to make them the best version of themselves and keep them comfortable. I have a client who is the lead vocalist, former lead vocalist with Atlantic Star. Did all their big, big, big hits. I've been producing her shows and her records for 20 years. And the relationship between an artist and a producer is something that affects the results in the record. So we hang. You know, I actually like it when she cooks. Shrimp and grits, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what um, are some of your projects that are coming up? I know that you are writing a book, or is it written and ready to go? Or? It's written, and it's coming out in the next month or two. It's called You Sound Amazing, The Biggest Lies of the Music Business. No! <laughs> it's every single lie. That I've been telling for decades. I mean, that, that I've heard for decades. Oh my gosh! And, uh, wow! <laughs> it's really so. Fun. Tell me a little bit about the book. What's what's it? I mean, obviously. Well, okay. So. Give us you, some teasers. Okay. So, all right. Here's a quickie. Okay. Okay. A quickie. A quickie. We're gonna have a quickie here. It's a quickie. Hold on. <laughs> all right. So this young girl wants to be a singer. Her father delivers. Says, "Okay, I'll give you vocal lessons." So she starts singing and she's horrible. She's screeching, you know, like one of these on the blackboard, she's screeching. So her father's downstairs in the living room and listening to her and then all of a sudden the dog sitting next to him starts howling. So she's screeching, the dog is howling. Finally, the father's had enough. So he yells upstairs, could you please at least sing a song the dog doesn't know? <laughs> I just want to give you the intellectual level of my book. Oh, wait. <laughs> when is it coming out? I think it's going to be out uh, in February or March. Okay. But there's also a very serious side of our jokes. Uh, another joke that actually is more tragic than anything is when, uh, let's say that you're a recording artist. And, God. You, and you, you just got a deal on a major label. And so you call the label and you say, hey, Bob, what'd you think of my new record? And Bob says, I don't know. I'm the only one that's heard it. That's pretty depressing. Because in, if you keep your job at a major label, you always have to say no. If this guy likes it and this guy likes it, then I like it. So there's stories like that. Lots of stories. I have... I have you, you probably have a lot of people come up to you asking you for advice let me pick your brain can i take you to lunch that kind of stuff i do the the biggest one is can you listen to my song and tell me what you think oh, Lordy. and i say listen i love would love to listen to your song but let me tell you what i really think you're asking you want you think that i may have more contacts than you in the record business which may be true you think that i have more history in the record business which may be true you think that I have been screwed by more people in the record business, which is a fact. And you want to know if I can listen to your song, tell you what I think, so you can avoid all those things, take advantage of my contacts, and use them to propel your career. And... You charge people for this. Well, that's the point. If the song blows up, what are the odds of them coming back to me and saying, hey, listen, we love what you... None. Put that in your contract next time. Well, we need to talk. We need to talk. I'll help you with that. Um, next projects. You are just coming back from somewhere, or you are doing a no, production, are. or you're going somewhere. I am actually recording an amazing record 
with a wonderful Chinese film composer. So we're going to do half the record in Los Angeles and with amazing musicians, Vinny Kaliuta, Rhonda Smith, amazing musicians. And then we go to do the Eastern musicians and the Eastern instruments in Taiwan. And then we come back here and we mix it. And it's an amazing record. And then I go from that to a straight ahead all-star jazz record in New Orleans where we're, we're doing um, uh, the actual mashup of original material with historical songs of that city. We're using all players from New Orleans. So. That's going to be interesting. Now, when is that going to come out? That is actually, we're recording that in um, April, and that is with an artist named Clifford Lamb, the Chinese film composer who is actually uh, here in Los Angeles uh, now, we're preparing, uh, is Christina Liang. So. We have a lot of things uh, on the horizon, and we're going to have to keep in touch so that we can get your artists on uh, our magazine. That would be fantastic. Have them come down, and we'll have a little chit chat with them Don't and talk about. Me. <laughs> Watch out! Where can people find you if they want to look you up, or do you want people finding you? Uh, they can always find me. Uh, <laughs> you, you can always reach out to me at, at Jeffrey Weber at me dot com. J e f f r e y. Do you have a website, or do you have a? You the, the honest truth. I just don't have time. I know. So this is my New Year's resolution. Rather than lose this 20 tons of blubber that accompany me wherever I go, I resolved, resign myself to getting my website. But I have 200 records that I've got to put up, you know? Credits, album, so I'm trying. You're a busy guy. And I'm always looking for new people to enrich my life as I help enrich theirs. Thank you so much for stopping by. And I'm talking with us, I'm so happy to talk with you Can every I time. Give you a squeeze? Yes, you may. Thank you so much. All right, that's it from here. Hi, we're back here at NAM, and we have Shelly Pykic in here with us. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Um, you have been a songwriter for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't want. To, I was just said many years. Feel free. <laughs> Well, you started out when? Oh, my first recorded song was in the 80s. Okay. And, but your hit song, What a Girl Wants, mm -hmm. that really kind of propelled you up into stardom. Right. It got me taken very seriously, and then I had a few more to follow. What's special about that song is that it was the first number one song of the new century. And this January is 20 years since. So Tell me about the song itself in regards to how you wrote it and why. Yeah. What a Girl Wants was a song I co-wrote with my friend Guy Roche, and he was just freestyling on the keyboard, and I was trying to think about what it took to have the courage to move from New York to Los Angeles and be with my guy. And he was giving me space and strength, and I finally did it. And it's about a real-life situation, and I'm so glad that Christina related to it in some way. Yeah. Sweet. And it really took off. It sure did. Okay. Yeah. Where have you seen other people? I remember um, interviewing um, Ray Parker Jr. one time, and he was telling me all the different places that uh, Ghostbusters has been played, as right. well as Bobby Caldwell. Oh. So who else has um, sang this song that's the most obscure? Well, um, gosh. <laughs> Who was it? Any met metal bands or? <laughs> no, but it's been on The Voice a million times, on America's Got Talent a million times. Um, Mel Gibson sang it on screen in What Women Want. And now, after all these years of writing songs for other people, I have just recorded my version. And it's the first single off of the album I am finally making. And that comes out in February, February. How does 7th. that make you feel, jumping from songwriter to artist? It makes me feel great. And honestly, Kelly, I, I don't give away my age, but you can look at me and tell I'm not some young diva. I was never ready until now. And I just said, what's next in life, you know? And I, I wrote all these songs. What a Girl Wants wasn't my only hit. I didn't have a gazillion, maybe five. And then I wrote a book that uh, the audio version was nominated for a Grammy Award. And I just feel like I'm a creative person. I never made that album I always wanted to make as a young girl. And I feel like a young girl again. What a girl won. Yep. And the first preview single to the whole album comes out today. So, so this is your book. This is my book, Confessions of a Serial Songwriter. I brought a 
look at you. Aren't you adorable? Look at that. That is so cute. It looks like you're in jail. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> that's perfect, absolutely perfect. Okay, so let's talk about the album yeah. a little bit more. Um, what, it's coming out in February. Well, the album is gonna come out probably in the summer. Okay. Because the way we do it these days is we re release singles. Okay. So I have a preview single coming out today just to get the universe ready for me putting music out there instead of just as a writer. What a Girl Wants comes out in February. I'm going to be doing um, Human on the inside, which the Pretenders recorded. Um, Almost Doesn't Count, which Brandy had a hit with. Uh, Who You Are, that Jesse J had a hit with. And I'm just reapproaching them. Oh, Bitch, that Meredith Brooks recorded. I'm reapproaching them and in, in just turning them on their heads. And then the other half of the album is going to be just songs that nobody's ever heard before that I need to at this point in my life put out in the universe and if I have to do it myself that's what I'm going to do. It comes from inside from where you are at that point. This kind of songwriter it did. I was never able to just take stuff and make hits out of anything except for real life yeah. feelings. Yeah. Other songwriters can and I admire them for doing that. Okay. I just write about real life, you know. Wow. And I also um, did a little research on you. You work a lot with Sona and helping the uh, songwriters. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about how that is impacting songwriters today. Thank you. What's going on? Thank you for asking. Um, Sona, Songwriters of North America, is a um, grassroots advocacy organization okay. that about four women started about five years ago. And now we, we called ourselves the Fempire. Um, we just saw when digital royalties started sort of depleting our income streams, um, our statements were just going down and further and further. So with the help of Dina LaPolt, a wonderful attorney, we started this organization. Now we're at six, seven hundred strong men and women. Everybody is just brilliant. And we speak with the sole voice of a songwriter. Although we've got allies in publishing and allies in PRO, we needed our own voice with only our interest to bring to the table. We go to Washington, D.C., we lobby, we write briefs, and we've got a voice at the table now. We were very instrumental in writing the MMA, um, the Music Modernization Act, which passed unanimously in the House and the Senate. It's not a perfect piece of legislation. It's going to get better. But you know what? It's a start. It's a start. Thank you. I want to hug you for that. It is. <laughs> because we've gotten a lot of criticism for the imperfections. But, you know, if we hadn't put that out there, if we hadn't gotten something out Did you there, sing them the song, What a Girl Wants? What a girl wants, what a girl needs. <laughs> what, who? No, no, no. What I was a gonna, girl? Yeah, what? I was gonna say, um, we I'll do anything sing, you want me to. We can, we can sing that song in Congress. I totally go to Congress with my guitar and yeah. sing them a song. That's what I was thinking. Well, on my website, I have videos of that because you can go to Congress with any ask and they listen but songs speak louder than words when i go in there and play bitch or what a girl wants and they say oh my wife that's her favorite song and they actually they actually that actually moves them faster okay I'm trying to explain to them yeah. what the problem is so where can people find your music so I am on Spotify, please add me, Apple Music, Deezer, I'm going to be up on Tidal. Um, you could go to my website, ShellyPiken.com. And you spell that last name. Yes, S-H-E-L-L-Y-P-E-I-K-E-N. There's all kinds of players and links and God, you know, I'm, I'm so happy I had help doing this because... Now, are you going to go on tour at all? Well, you know, I do, I, I don't do a concert. I do a live one hour, one woman show. It is a humorous conversation about being a professional songwriter. I bring my guitar and I weave six of my hits through the show. I'm hoping someday to film it and put it up there on that would be awesome. Netflix or Apple Music or um, we're, right. doing, we're doing a, a my, my publisher, Cobalt, is hosting an evening for me at the H Club in March. Maybe you can come. I'd no. love to. Wonderful. We'll, we'll try to make it. So take us out with uh, What a Girl Wants. Oh. Can you? 
What a girl wants. I don't my guitar. What a girl needs. Whatever makes you happy sets you free. And I'm thanking you for giving it to me. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by. Oh, you are a doll. You are so welcome. All right. All right. Have pleasure. a wonderful time at Thank the show. You. All right. That's it from here. Hey, this is Brenda Starr. You're watching Backstage 360. We're here at NAM in the Media Center, and we're wrapping things up. But before we go, we absolutely 100% want to say thank you to this man right here. So David has been, uh, he's the one that hooked us up here in the Media Center, and we've been having a blast. I want to uh, get to know you a little sure, better, absolutely. right? absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Tell me, like, what's your official title and what part did you have in play, you know, in bringing all this together? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Dave Glodke, and I'm the head of corporate communications for the Harman Professional Solutions Division um, at Harman International. And um, so we have, we're a portfolio of professional uh, brands, including AKG, uh, JBL, Soundcraft, Studer, um, BSS Signal Processing, Crown Amplifiers, it goes on and on. We market about 11 brands under the portfolio. So Harman's an audio company. Um, we're a global audio company, and we have four divisions um, in car audio and um, connected car, uh, car uh, systems. And we also have a uh, consumer division, so JBL on the division on the consumer end and AKG as well. Wow. And so we're the professional solutions division. So we're thinking about how our gear is deployed in enterprise and inter in the entertainment uh, world. So for an example, JBL, uh, we might be, uh, we provide, you know, studio reference monitors uh, for the recording studio, but we also have line arrays uh, for touring audio uh, for tours that are going on all around the world. So it really, it, it expands the breadth of, of, of what the professional needs in the music industry. Now we, you know, music festivals like, uh, like uh, Summerfest, you know, the stages on Summerfest using JBL for their, their audio. Um, we are deployed in the, uh, the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. There are nine stages of the Kennedy Center. Um, it's a full Harman house. That means that they're using the JBL uh, speakers. They're using the Crown amplifiers. They're using AKG headphones for monitoring and, and a lot of Soundcraft and Studer uh, large format uh, mixers uh, to, for the National Symphony Orchestra and the opera and um, in all kinds of performances. So we really span. And we also have an installed sound as well. So for um, corporate and government education, installed sound in restaurants, for an example, um, cruise ships, uh, you know, wherever there's uh, audio, you're going to pretty much find a Harman product. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's like that's so much more than I realized that you had going on. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're a big company, we're yeah. for sure. So what are, what are your goals for 2020 uh, for the company? Or you could share some personal ones too. <laughs> some personal goals, yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> So for uh, for the company for 2020, I mean, we're really one of the things that we're really uh, one of the many things that we're doing here at NAM is we're showcasing a lot of um, the, uh, gear that's geared towards the content creator. And what that means is that for you know JBL has been a brand for 70 years. AKG 70. seven zero seven zero wow yeah AKG has been a brand for 70 years, and uh, we have a lot of institutional knowledge on what it takes to um, be in a professional environment. But you know, when you think back uh, 20, 30 years, if you had a band and you wanted to record a demo, you know, you had to go hustle, you know, five grand off your parents to say, you know, I need studio time, I need an engineer, I need a studio, and so we we need, you know, so how do we build gear now that we've got um, distribution points like Spotify and YouTube and uh, the ease of use for um, you know young people to sit down and record high quality professional grade material for that distribution channel, how do you make it as easy as possible without having an engineer, without having a producer? So with the AKG Lyra um, uh, USB microphone, which is right here, um, and, the, uh, and the new uh, K371. Of Ivana White here, yes. So we, so we manufacture these. Uh, in fact, at NAMM, we're, uh, we're releasing a, um, a bundle. Uh, it was called Podcaster Essentials. And what it is is we're bundling the headphones, the microphone, and, and with some uh, Ableton uh, software into it. So those people, you know, think of a teenager. I want to start recording. And so you set it up, you plug it in your computer, you download some software, and you're ready to go and, it's in, and have professional-grade um, audio. So that's a big focus for us for um, 2020. 
Um, but also we service a lot of you know front of house engineers for major tours, lighting designers for major tours. We have a Mart, uh, our lighting brand, Martin. Um, you know, so we're deployed all around the world and tours all around, but we need to keep innovating and that's what we're going to be all about in 2020 to keep innovating those. That is awesome. Yeah. So tell me, yes, David, have you been with the company for those whole 70 years? Um, yes, I have. I'm a vampire. Um, I'm 400 years old. You no. look <laughs> fabulous. Fabulous. No. <laughs> no. You know, we, we appreciate you letting us camp out here in yeah. our spot. We've had so much fun, so many great people. Have you met a lot of great people besides me while you've been here? Oh, uh, you, you, first of all, you guys have been terrific. You guys, uh, you guys set up shop here in the media center. I've become friends with you guys. Uh, you've had some pretty inspirational people come through and your your content is 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 fantastic. So um, but yeah, we've got people from you know, podcasters with not very big audiences to be with huge audiences. We've, uh, CNN, he, uh, CNN was here to do a, um, a segment. Uh, LA Times uh, was here to do uh, some work as well. So um, the concept of what we're doing here at the Media Center is that we approach NAM, um, who, uh, you know, we love and adore, and we've been a part of the NAM world for many, many years. Um, we approached them and said, listen, um, we have an opportunity to provide uh, the media who attends the show with a really like high touch, uh, first class experience where we can provide some of the technical know-how um, so people can execute on creating some really good content. Um, so we've set up a number of podcasting stations, uh, certainly making room on the floor for people to do their, uh, their, their stand-up uh, broadcasts. Uh, we have the uh, JBL AKG studio truck, mobile studio truck, which when it's not at a trade show, it's it's doing road shows all around the United States, North America, meeting customers and distributors and showing what we're doing. But today it's more about NAM. It's more about servicing uh, NAM and the media here and allowing, uh, throwing our doors open and making sure that um, everybody has a, a, a unique place to, to work. And um, so we're really excited about what we've been able to do over the uh, last several days. And we're using all your equipment here, right? Your mics and everything to do this? Yeah, yeah I, I was really happy you guys showed up and said, hey, you know, what do you, what do you got on the truck that, that we can use? And uh, so you've had a number of AKG uh, products, uh, you know, the, at your disposal and, and happy to accommodate you. Can I get to take this mic home? Uh, maybe. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I can go with the maybe. Will you be back next year? Yeah, so we'd love to be back next year. Um, this is a bit of a beta test uh, to see, you know, if the concept works and what the feedback was, how, how we can serve as people uh, better in the future. And we've got, had a lot of feedback for sure. Um, and so we think that we can, um, you know, return with a with a really good plan and, and blow it out. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Awesome. Well, we would love to join you next year. 2021. We'll be back. Okay, great. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. This is Brenda Starr. Backstage 360. We're out of here. That's a wrap. Hi, I'm Jeff Weber. I'm a record producer in Los Angeles, California, but I also am an author, too. My new book is called You Sound Amazing, Every Single Lie of the Music Business. You can find it on Headline Books, and it's available everywhere where lies are told. Anyway, if you want to find out more about what I'm doing in the recording studio, come down and visit me. But first, check out Backstage 360, because that's where you're going to find the clues to who I'm working with and to where I am. Hi there, I'm Shelley Pike, and I'm so glad to be here at Backstage 360 talking about new music that's coming out today. And a first official single in February. You could find all my music on my website, ShellyPiken.com. It's S-H-E-L-L-Y-P-E-I-K-E-N. And you can click through to any platform from there. Additional information about me can be found on Backstage 360. And thanks for having me.